Well, I was originally going to just set it for private instead of unlisted, but I've decided to delete the video and have already done such, critiquing the teacher and critiquing some of the people at that meeting. I was unnecessarily mean-spirited, especially during that military section. Now, I already talked about, you know, where I was wrong on that part about it and went further into about the military with my follow-up video, but still, I didn't need to have the video still up where I was just being unnecessarily mean-spirited. I mean, I still think my overarching message was good, that we shouldn't indoctrinate children in public schools with any sort of political ideology. But it was poorly executed. And there's also just the element that I was critiquing people who were merely trying to speak their mind at a board meeting. It may not seem like it did, but it took me like six hours to make that video. I mean, at least a couple hours of it was just trying to gather up different video clips from different sources. I eventually just went with those two because they just seemed to be the best ones. But uh, the clips from the actual website from the meeting... And then there were the clips from Project Veritas where they were interviewing that teacher. But, you know, spending that long trying to make the video, I, I guess I just wasn't in the best frame of mind, quite honestly. And it just sort of seemed that I was more annoyed with the parents speaking their mind than I was with the teacher. I wasn't, but I mean, that's the way it came off in the video. It just didn't work out so well. I mean, I do think we need to fundamentally transform American society, but certainly not through indoctrinating children. That's just messed up. You know, the, the process of this sort of change is going to be slow. You try to push the change too quickly, you're not going to like the results. You know, when the Overton window snaps back, it's ugly. So I do think it's a good thing that Project Veritas released that footage to the world. And I think it's a very good thing that parents got involved with the school board meeting. You know, that's what those meetings are there for. Now, I do have worries that in the future it could become violent. I'm wondering if they're going to have to get a bunch of security for these meetings. One of the things that just concerns me so much is that I don't want to see schools go back to teaching religious nationalism. And many people just don't seem to understand that teaching that kind of religious nationalism is just as indoctrinating as the things they're complaining about. But, you know, there were two people in the comment section that made me think a bit. They, they brought up the fact that, hey, it's, it's not right that the teacher is making the students pin where they are politically on some board. You know, they're, it's not right that they make these students state their political views publicly. You know, it's the notion that, hey, they're, those kind of views should be private unless they, they choose to make it public out of their own will, right? Not, not because they're coerced into it, right? And initially I was like, well, I mean, I, I thought about when I was in high school, the only history class that I ever took that I really was able to relate with at that time was the class that the teacher did make people or suggested that people, you know, state their views more. And, you know, because most of the time history classes for me was just about memorizing names and dates. And, you know, I thought it would be a good thing to, to continue this notion of let's get people more personally involved in, in, in this so they, they understand it more. But I understand now that, you know, times are different than they were like in the late 80s, obviously. And we've got the internet and people will shame people a lot more now than, than they, I mean, maybe not more, but it's done differently. You know, the way that people shame is different. Sometimes it can be more mentally damaging than, you know, being stuffed in your locker or something, you know. And it, with the age of the internet, uh, someone can be bullied about one thing for years, and it may never go away. And also with the way that things are right now, you know, it, having a right-wing viewpoint is not going to be considered very popular. And I could just picture someone being called a Nazi in school because they, they tilt to the right or something, right? I don't know whether that's happened, but I can picture it. So I can understand now, you know, after giving it some thought, thanks to the comments, that, hey, this might not be such a great idea. So thanks for that. I also unlisted the video regarding the people that don't seem to want to listen to experts. I'll eventually be deleting that video as well. I was far too just 
blatantly dismissive of people who have legitimate concerns about some of the side effects that have been legitimately reported about the vaccines. Though, I mean, with the Pfizer one, there's hardly any reports of this, but, uh, you know, I, I, I get that people are concerned. You know, people have concerns about anything that has any sort of side effects, so I get that. And I also made it sound as though Republicans in general sort of line up with some of the things that you see in the trending section on BitChute. And that's not necessarily true. I mean, there's, the, you know, I mean, it seems most Republicans sort of align with what you'd find on Fox News or OAN or, or uh, Newsmax, The Blaze, Daily Wire, and many others. Oh yeah, Breitbart, right? Gotta include Breitbart. Lots of anti-mask and anti-vaccine narratives, but they're not on the crazy level that you find on BitChute, where they say things like, oh, uh, these, these politicians are being arrested now, and, and the plan is coming into place, or, or whatever, right? You know, constantly setting new dates for when Trump is, Trump is going to be victorious, everyone look out. Or people claiming the vaccines are a bioweapon. And then there's Holocaust denial and white nationalist narratives. Look, I understand that there are ongoing clinical trials for ivermectin in regard to COVID. I also understand that ivermectin has been used since the 80s in humans for parasites. There have been some off-label uses, and they're not approved, and they aren't even necessarily very effective, but it has been used, and there have been some deaths associated with ivermectin from before people were trying to use it to treat COVID. I see nothing wrong with criticizing the use of it to treat COVID, since it's not approved. The reason why it's such a bad idea to promote its use is that some people are going to use the livestock version and end up in the ER. That's already happening. And yes, some people are desperate. If we normalize the notion of using ivermectin without being prescribed by a doctor, people will die. If you don't care about those people that die because you think they're stupid, that doesn't say very much about your morals or your ability to empathize with others. Harm reduction is important. So yes, I'm going to make fun of people like Joe Rogan. We don't need more people in the ER. It's pretty simple. But, you know, I could have made a better video. So that video is gone. Thanks for watching.